Good morning. Today we are going to continue reading The Chocolate Touch. Today we are going to be reading Chapter 8. When we left off, uh, John was trying to eat his lunch in the cafeteria at school, but everything he put in his mouth, no matter what, would turn to chocolate, and he was getting sick of eating chocolate. So let's continue to read to see where John is. English class passed without incident. Incident means like nothing happened. There was nothing bad that happened. Miss Plimsoll distributed word list for her pupils to take home. The more words you know, she explained, as always, the more exactly you could think. There were some difficult new words John noticed. Avarice, indigestion, acidity, unhealthiness, moderation, digestibility. As Miss Plimsoll explained the meaning of each one, it seemed to John as though they all had a special bearing on his present uncomfortable condition. At last, the bell rang. Very well, class, Miss Plimsoll said. Time for outside activities. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Miss Plimsoll. Miss Plimsoll gave the signal for dismissal, and the pupils in the front row filed out, followed by those in the second row, including John and Susan. Susan played a violin in the school orchestra, and usually she and John went to their rehearsals in the auditorium together. This time, Susan hurried on ahead of him. John followed very slowly. The members of the orchestra were sitting at their music stands on the auditorium stage when John, carrying his dark blue trumpet case, got to his chair in the brass section. Mrs. Quaver had already begun to explain a difficult passage to the girl who played the flute. Just after Jay sings Nestlings Chirp and Flea, she was saying, you come in with your trill doodle oodle 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 o. Oh. Do you see the place on your score? Good. Ah, John, Mrs. Quaver exclaimed, seeing him in his place. I'm glad you're not absent. As I have just told the others, this afternoon we're having the first joint rehearsal of my arrangement of A Boy's Song by James Hogg. We've been over all the individual parts and all the sections you would call. You will recall. Now it's time to fit the pieces together. John nervously opened his trumpet case and took his shining golden trumpet from its bed of scarlet velvet. Scarlet here means red. This beautiful new instrument gave him confidence. He worked the valves nimbly with his fingers and looked up at Mrs. Quaver again. Now, John, she said, tell me when your little solo begins. Right after the end of the second verse, John promptly replied. He had practiced his part every evening in the basement at home for the last two weeks. He knew every note perfectly. After the line, that's the way for Billy and me. Good, Mrs. Quaver said, and don't forget what I told you, John. This is a happy song. I want you to play ta-da, 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 ta-da simply repeating the rhythm of the voice, and I want you to be light and lively. This is supposed to be the song of a boy who loves romping in the country. Ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta, John thought. That shouldn't be too difficult. Even with the whole orchestra listening to him, he had played it over and over again at home, but he would have to try extra hard here. This was to be his first solo. Everyone else was depending on him to play it properly. Right, said Mrs. Quaver brightly. With her baton, she rapped twice sharply on the music stand before her. Okay, and rapped means, like, to knock. Tap on something. Knock or tap on something. All the musicians brought their instruments into the playing position. Susan poised her bow over the strings of her violin. John held it, his trumpet close to his mouth and wiggled his fingers on the valves. Mrs. Quaver's baton moved from side to side, up and then down. The cymbals clashed and the drums thumped. The pianist brought his fingers down on the ivory keys of the piano. The violinists and cellists made their wheeling and whooping sounds. All were in perfect unison. The rehearsal had begun. After the introduction, one of the older boys began to sing. Where the pools are bright and deep, where the gray trout lies asleep, up the river and over the lee, that's the way for Billy and me. After, very, after the very last line of the first voice, John's fellow trumpeter echoed the rhythm of the singer's voice. Ta-ta, 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 ta-ta. 
Mrs. Quaver smiled approvingly at the successful performance, and with her baton gave the singer the signal to begin the second verse. Where the blackbird sing the latest, an obu went peep, where the hawthorn blooms the sweetest, where the nestlings chirp and flee, the flute warbled according to plan. That's the way for Bill Billy and me. John swallowed with an effort and put the mouthpiece to his trumpet to his lips for his solo. The mouthpiece instantly changed to chocolate. Then, almost as fast, the chocolate spread along the instrument, changing all the flashing gold into dull brown. The first name note came out fairly true. Ta! But chocolate trumpets cannot withstand much pressure. The hole in the mouthpiece softened and clogged up, and the valve stuck as John desperately tried to finish his part. Mrs. Quaver's eyes almost popped out of her head as she listened to him play. ta ta tu 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 It sounded as though John were trying to play a soap-filled bubble pipe. Terribly flustered, he put down his trumpet. Mrs. Quaver was speechless. The orchestra was rocked by uproarious laughter. The other trumpeter leaned over towards John's chair and picked up the trumpet. It's a chocolate trumpet, he shouted derivously. No wonder it sounded like that. John Midas was trying to play a chocolate. John didn't wait to hear any more. He fled from the stage and out to the playground. Without stopping to even look around, he ran through the stone gateway and homeward. So John did not have a very good music practice. So we did end up meeting a new character. We had Mrs. Quaver, who is our music teacher. Uh, we're still, he is still in school, so the setting has not changed. So our settings have still been his house and school. And then we had three vocabulary words. We had incident, so they had said without incident, which means nothing bad happened. We had scarlet, which in that case meant red. It's like scarlet red. And then we had wrapped, which means to knock or tap on something. Okay, so you're now going to go answer some questions on chapter 8. And... We will continue to see what happens with John and how he solves his problem tomorrow.